Hello everyone and welcome to Inside Gaming. I'm Alana, this is Zach and we have Caden on the phone. Today we are going to review Dragon Quest Builders 2. Now I only played a bit of, a little bit, like maybe an hour so that I could ask you guys about it to have a foundation. Uh, how would you, from the top, describe this game? What is it? It is charmingly infuriating. That's fair. Caden? <laughs> it is Minecraft with a JRPG's DNA injected into it and it's very long. That is absolutely the vibe that I get from it, that is Minecraft plus JRPG. And I kind of did want to talk about that, but let's let's get into the building first. Uh, how much building do you do? How easy is it? How creative can you get? Yeah, I mean, so Caden said it pretty well, like it has the DNA of a Minecraft clone, but that's kind of a disservice to play it that way um, because it's a very structured game as opposed to Minecraft where they just kind of dump you in a world mm -hmm. and say, build whatever you want. Um, the mission structure is really important to this game where you, it'll, you know, do it'll ask you to do builds that make sense for your town and then you can kind of use those as inspiration to make things more grandiose on your own so for instance it'll say hey we're hungry your residents need a kitchen and you go okay i can build like a simple kitchen with like one cook fire mm -hmm. but then your like mind starts wondering and you're like okay what if i add this and this and then like by the time you're done you have this really elaborate kitchen so that kind of like i said the mission structure inspires your own creativity like a jumping off point and how simple is it to just pick up and build in your opinion uh, I mean, it's it, there's a lot of resource management that you have to do, so you do have to farm resources like a Minecraft clone where to build with anything, you need to have that. But it's pretty simple to do that. You stock up really easily just by playing the game normally. You almost always have a huge cache of some sort of material. Um, and then as the game progresses, you get more uh, varied materials, so you don't just build with mud. Like later on in the second island, you're building with iron and things that are a little more mm -hmm. structurally sound. So Caden, what, what would you say are the pros and cons of the building mechanics? Uh, the building mechanics are, are great, but it feels very restrictive with that early game and based on how the story unfolds, you're locked into what you can create on a certain island at any time. And you even have to relearn recipes when you get back to the hub island after completing one of the main quest islands, which kind of sucks because it should just be there automatically. I feel like as you progress, you should keep those upgrades and not have to remember them when you get back to this other island. It's okay, is the best way I could put it. Yeah, I feel like to Zach's original comment, a lot of how I would describe this game, even from the short chunk of it that I played, is that there's a lot of cool stuff there, but a lot of it is infuriating in very small ways. There are choices they made that I'm like, why the hell did they do that? Uh, so another note, aside from the Minecraft, thing, which is, it is very Minecrafty. It's not even trying to pretend that it's not Minecrafty. It's a lot of putting blocks on top of each other and everything is pretty square and cube. Uh, there is the whole JRPG aspect, which is way more in depth than I expected it to be. Yeah, this game is deceptively huge, like uh, to the point where Caden and I were slacking each other about um, both thinking like something was wrong with us or we were playing it wrong because we were 25 hours in on Caden's side and I was closer to 35, 40 hours mm -hmm. and I was still like on the second island. Um, and then it, after like looking through Reddit and stuff and, and kind of spoiling a bit of the end game for myself uh, because I no, have not finished it yet, it is huge. Um, the first island is kind of an extended tutorial uh, and it goes on for Ever. <laughs> Forever. Uh, seriously, like you can put 25 hours into just the first island, but then um, the pace does start to pick up once you get off of it. Take things back to your hub island, take what you've learned, and, uh, and start building there. But um, there is a really frustrating mechanic, kind of to Caden's point, about uh, the materials that you get and like the way they kind of force a hard reset and, and really designate each island as a specific area into itself. Mm -hmm. That you can't bring materials from one island to the other for the most part. You Such have to leave them choice. behind. Yeah, so like any items that you gather on one island, you then have to bring it to the ship, leave it like on a, in a bag by the side of the ship, and then like Caden said, use that recipe to then build that item again on your hub island. Yeah. So it's a very weird mechanic, but um, to the JRPG point, uh, it, it does scratch that itch of like, you know, when you're playing a JRPG game and it's like, hey, do you love this cozy little town that you're hanging out in? It's like, come build it, dude. Like, come build that town. <laughs> and like, you can kind of like run amok with, uh, just like making things as cozy or as grandiose as you like. It's very satisfying in that regard for and a JRPG I feel JRPG like it has film. a lot of personality and there are a lot of NPCs who just look cute and they're hanging out in their own little towns. Mm -hmm. And it's all very sweet in a Final Fantasy IX kind of way, mm -hmm. which is very specific, but it is that kind of fantastic sweetness. Um, Kaden, how did you feel about the JRPG side of things? So 
The Dragon Quest Builder series itself is actually a remake of the initial Dragon Quest series itself. So Dragon Quest Builders 1 was Dragon Quest 1, and this one is Dragon Quest 2, what with that Minecraft aesthetic on top of it. It follows similar story beats along the way, but has some twists and turns to it. It's a JRPG. It really is unapologetically a JRPG. So it does have that really long-winded tutorial and that really like breathy dialogue that just happens and goes on and on. But if you really like those JRPG kind of games, this one scratches that itch really well. And Dragon Quest is a mainstay series for JRPG. So it's it is what it is. I mean, you're you're going to see very familiar characters throughout. And it feels like home when it comes to playing a classic game like this. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, like, this is the first game I've played in the entire series. I didn't play Dragon Quest Builders 1. I've only played this one. Um, does it have, because this is my favorite part of JRPGs, just characters that you fall in love with and plot twists and turns and relationships that develop as you as you continue? Yeah, it has that for sure, but I would say they're not as meaningful uh, in uh, in this game as they would be in maybe a more full-fledged traditional JRPG. Yeah. Like characters definitely have arcs and twists and turns, but they're they're not as uh, consequential. Okay, so I guess would you say that it's a little bit lighter narratively, uh, and instead has put the building aspect in? Like, what what would you say has been taken away to add the building stuff in that that makes it? Not completely a JRPG, but not completely a building game. What's the balance is my question. This is where the game falls apart for me. It doesn't feel like there is a balance. It feels like the JRPG section is next to the building aspect and they're walking side by side, but they're just not talking to each other properly. Uh, they end up sending you on these different paths and quests, but unlike a normal RPG where you generally have like, oh, hey, this is the thing I need to do. And there's like a list of things that you need to handle or in Minecraft where you have like uh, a building set of tools and checklists and everything. None of that really exists here to keep everything coherent. It's just the main line quest and like a bullet point. So at times it can be confusing as to what to actually do. Uh, I know I spent probably two hours just wandering around for the fun of it, and I'm just like, oh, I'm probably progressing in some way, shape, or form, and I wasn't actually accomplishing anything as far as the story goal was concerned, which is very particular about how you get things done. If you do things out of order, it'll make you go back and do it again. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah, I was, I was telling Kaden there was a moment where I also was just exploring the world and found uh, an area that I would need to return to later for a mission, and then uh, when it came time to do that mission, the item that I needed wasn't there anymore, but I still had to go back to that spot and just be there to activate that mission right. checkpoint. And But then there's other times where it's like very inconsistent where somebody will be like, like, hey, pour water right here, and then I'll run to the next spot. And it's like, you pour more water right here. But if you just kind of supersede them and go do it yourself, then they'll go, oh, okay, cool, you did it. And like the mission will log is complete, but then you still have to go back to the mission origin point and talk to that person to com complete the mission. I see what you mean. So it's like a little finicky that way. Just a very specific structure, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if we're getting through these gameplay pillars, the one thing that really stood out to me that I want to point out is that I think the combat kind of sucks. How it's, did you guys feel yeah, about it? Yeah, combat is not good. It's not yeah. deep. Um, there's no like dodge or block mechanic. Nope. Even though you can get shields, there's no way to block with them. It just increases your overall defense. Um, the most that you can do to have variety in your combat is is th these weird, awkward kind of like circle jumps that you do where you jump and like twist backwards like mm -hmm. 180 and then run away. Um, and that's fine for like the, the mobs of enemies where it's like little small stuff, but then you get to these big uh, like end of chapter bosses. I, they all just kind of feel the same until they start to like uh, really lean on these weird mechanics to differentiate them. So for instance, like uh, there's one boss that he will do this big roll charge at you, and then you need to find an object in the world to put in his way. Well, some of the bosses do look him. really cool. Yeah, they look really awesome. Yeah, for sure. But that doesn't make the general combat more fun. <laughs> it's just really, it's just really shallow. Like the combat, yeah. there's not much to it. Does that change, or does it feel any more satisfying when you get to multiplayer? Uh, I mean, like, the, the fact that you can arm your townspeople with weapons, um, and then everyone charges out onto the field to do these massive battles is cool. Um, that feels very satisfying. Uh, and as far as the actual multiplayer with real people combat, uh, I have not personally experienced that. Caden, have you? I played a little bit of online, but it's 
it's mostly something that you play with friends. It's not really focused on combat or, or anything like that. It's, it really is that let's go build something and kind of adventure on a like an island together. And it's completely disconnected from the story in every way, shape, and form. You cannot play story together at all. It's all on these multiplayer islands, but there is cross-play between PS4 and Switch, apparently, so that's really cool. Uh, I, I, before we get too far away from the multiplayer, though, I should bring up what this game does incredibly well with multiplayer, which is the notice board. Um, I, when I first started playing around with it, I just was overjoyed at the amount of stuff there is to do in it. Basically, if, uh, if you're unaware, how it works is that you can place a notice board in your in your farm, and then when you walk up to it, uh, it activates kind of like the, the community aspect of the game. Um, so there's uh, different levels that you can jump into that people have created. There's snap, you can browse by snapshot, like today's top snapshots, and then uh, see this amazing photo somebody took of their hub world. And then some of them, uh, some of the creators actually let you go into that, so you can go explore it. We should we should address though that the multiplayer is by no means accessible from the beginning of the game. Yeah. In fact. Uh, uh, Kaden, I don't want to speak for you, but for me, it was about 25 to 30 hours in yeah. before I unlocked multiplayer. It was about 20 hours in for me. I, I ended up clocking in about six, close to 60 hours into the game. And yeah, I, onto that second island, it's just, there's, I, I wish it was faster to get to the, the, oh, hey, it's an open world that you can create in your image aspect of the building. But that structure is so rigid in that JRPG world that it, they just don't want to bend at all. And I understand that this is Dragon Quest and it's a mainstay for Square Enix and a lot of people like it because of what it is, but this feels like the the type of, you know, spin-off franchise that they could play a little bit more fast and loose with, but they seem to not want to. Yeah, I mean, overall, a lot of the, the complaints that I've seen online, uh, it's not just that mission structure is rigid, it's that some of the controls are really awkward as well. Did you guys experience much of that? Yeah, I mean, it, just like any, you know, third person builder, you, you kind of, it gets a little finicky when you're trying to do certain block placement, whereas like a Minecraft being in, in mostly first person, it's really easy to just point and click. And thankfully this game does have a first person mode that you can switch to uh, on the fly, which makes building a little bit easier in some regards. I found myself pr using them actually pretty half and half. Um, like I would start a build in, in third person and then when I'd get that like tricky corner that I needed to get the placement just right, then swap into first person, place the block and then go back out. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it works, but it's like uh, the, the place I found that actually the most an annoying with like the finicky building controls is when you have like a mob of people in your town and they're all standing exactly where you need to be <laughs> and they'll get, they'll, they'll get out of your way. Like you can place a block and they'll like warp off to the side, but it's like so frustrating when you're trying to see the vision of this piece you're trying mm -hmm. to create, but there's 20 people scattered around it and then the same button to open your bag is the talk to people button. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to fish out a different building block and end up starting another five or 20 panel dialogue tree with some worm and it's like... Uh, I yeah. feel like that's kind of a good segue to the next topic, which is uh, the style. Like I feel like this game is really, really pretty and I really like being in the world. It's colorful, it's cartoony, but it looks unique. How do you guys feel about the presentation? Yeah, it's that same uh, beautiful kind of Dragon Quest, Dragon Ball art style. Uh, it's it's a satisfying world to be in. It's a, a oddly uh, very breathtaking at some times. You'll come mm -hmm. over over a mountain just as the sun's rising and see the settlement you've made from a distance. And yeah. I'm just like, oh God, <laughs> I am a builder. <laughs> How about you, Caden? Uh, Akira Toriyama's art design for all of these games is just so on point. It's so very, you know, fantasy. And, it, and the moment you boot it up, it's like, okay, this game is super pretty. The, the water looks great. The Each block is very clearly defined. All the monster designs are fantastic. And uh, honestly, my favorite character in the game is the little wiggly, the little worm that pals around with you for pretty much the entirety of the game. And... It's just, it's so damn charming with these characters and the designs and everything. I love it. I really do. How about uh, audio? How do we feel about the way that it sounds and the soundtrack and everything? The, the soundtrack for the most part is really great, but like anything good, too much of it kind of ruins it. Uh, <laughs> and and like especially that first island, like we said, that you spend 20 plus hours on, uh, it's the same it's a fairly short uh, soundtrack that loops over and over when you're in your home base. 
and uh, I swear I was like hearing it in my nightmares for three like, <laughs> three days in a row. Just um, and then, but then you know, like out in the overworld, like the music changes and swells, and there's really like the music cues are really important, um, especially for where you. Uh, like establish the boundaries of where your base is. Like you'll know that the end of your town area is where it is when the music switches and gets a little more like adventurous and ominous. Mm. And then when you return home, you know you're home and it switches that like cozy kind of small farm soundtrack vibe. It, it may just be me and I might have to just disagree with you, but the music is so nostalgic and I could listen to all these themes on repeat. There's a lot of like remastered versions of old classic sounds and sound effects and music across the board. It just, it makes me feel like, oh, this is Dragon Quest. And it nails it across the board with everything as far as sound design. I want to ask Zach, have you played the Dragon Quest games before? So yeah, that's an interesting point. I don't come at it with the nostalgia because I've only played Builders. I've okay. never played a Dragon Quest game except for Builders, so Okay, that's so yeah. cool. So you guys have played it on both PlayStation 4 and on Switch, right? Yeah, How different PS4. are the two versions? Yeah, I think Caden's probably had more technical issues than I have playing it on uh, PS4. She's playing it on Switch, and I know that uh, she was experiencing some performance issues. Uh, for me, it's pretty silky smooth on PS4. Um, I saw some PS4 Pro footage of it that was just like buttery smooth, mm. 60 frames per second. Um, but yeah, the only real performance issues I've had, like I said, is when you jump into really demanding uh, worlds that other players have made. Frame rate drops. Yeah. Caden, uh, what's it like on Switch? So in docked mode, it plays like garbage for me. Uh, the controls just don't really work as well. I used a pro controller and then I also used the joy cons that were docked inside the little joy con handle and everything felt slow, extremely slow. And frame rate drops would happen consistently in the normal gameplay and then even worse in online. So it, it really just slows down to, it slows down to a point that it's pretty painful, but that's when I take it into handheld mode and everything runs almost perfectly. So the game works great in handheld mode. It's where I spent most of my time playing it, which is weird for me specifically because I like playing my Switch docked more than handheld overall. So having to have this in handheld mode the entire time was weird for me, but it works for this game to a degree. It just sucks that when you actually get into docked mode, it's clunky and awkward. I mean, that's a huge bummer and probably a good case for people to buy it on PS4 if they're the kind of people who want to play on a TV rather than buying it on Switch and playing docked. But Hopefully that's something that they patch. Uh, I feel like we have spoken about a ton of negatives in the course of this review, but I think we all kind of still like the game. So I did want to ask you guys, what are your favorite things about it? Yeah, I, I, despite all of its shortcomings, I actually still just really love this game. It's like I said off the top, it's excruciatingly charming. Um, yeah. It never fails to have that sense of wonder that, that you get from creating something that you worked hard on. Um, and I think unlike a lot of Minecraft clones where you build something and it kind of feels like hollow and you're like, I don't, all right, cool, my house is done. Uh, here, like it feels like the, the townspeople really appreciate what you've done for mm -hmm. them. And it's a nice unexpected motivating factor to build things uh, not just for you, but for like the townspeople that you come to know and love and, and you want them to have a good place to live too. So mm -hmm. that kind of adds a little extra emotional oomph to just making like a four by four house or something. Yeah, it's not just you and your friends online who are like, look at this cool statue I made. It's yeah. people actually interacting with the thing you made full Yeah, it's like, oh, I want to make sure that this thing is functional too for these yeah. people. So, damn townspeople. <laughs> How about you, Caden? The spirit of Dragon Quest is so prevalent here and if you like Dragon Quest at all, you'll really like this game. It's accessible enough for new players to just jump into this one without any problems. But if you're a big fan of this entire series, it's just so charming and it's it's just a fun game to play. I found myself, you know, getting both aggravated that things were taking me so long, but then constantly saying, well, I'll just play for a little bit longer and then hours and hours have passed. So it's addicting but it's also frustrating. Yeah, this feels like one of those games where when you have to list the flaws, there are a lot of them, but for the most part, they are outweighed by how charming the whole thing is and how positive the experience feels to play. So it's kind of a weird one to review. Uh, any final thoughts? Anything else we need to mention? Sounds like we got it all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, catch us next time on Inside Gaming. Hey everyone, welcome to another Inside Gaming Review. Today we're talking about Super Mario Maker 2, which is, it's a weird game to review, kinda. 
Uh, we'll break it out though. There's kind of two main ways to play the game, so let's start right in with the what I think is the most fun part, just playing. Because why make something for the world when you can consume endlessly? 